The RTX 3070 released back in October of 2020 for a US MSRP of $500. It has eight gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM with a 256 bit memory bus. And finally, it has a TDP of 220 watts. And now at the time of filming, the RTX 3070 is basically three years old. And I thought it would be a good idea to revisit the card and see how well it stacks up in 2023. Geekbuying.com sent me out this specific RTX 3070. Now, a couple of things about this, right? So number one, it's called the 51 RISC model. I guess 51 risk. Maybe that means you're taking 51 different risk if you buy it. <laughs> I'm just joking. No, it's completely legitimate. I hopped in a Discord call with my Patreon members. We were benchmarking it together and we pulled up GPU-Z and verified it is a legitimate RTX 3070. And we validated this by confirming it actually has the GA104 die. Now, if you choose to buy the card from geekbuying.com, it is listed at $430. However, they did give me a discount code for my audience. And so you can take that all the way down to $389. And if that seems a little bit steep, I actually went ahead and checked over on newegg.com. And based on the prices I'm seeing on Newegg here in America, that's actually a pretty fair price. I can see 3070s going from $364 all the way up to almost $700. Now that's crazy. I don't know who would pay that amount of money for a 3070 in 2023. But anyway, the geekbuying.com price after my discount is actually somewhat of a reasonable price for a 3070 in today's current market. Now, with that being said though, if you're open to purchasing an AMD card, you can get a 6700 XT closer to the $300 marker and you get four more gigs of VRAM. And so it really just depends on what you're open to. I know there are several gamers out there who don't wanna buy a AMD GPU for whatever reason, even though it's totally fine. I'm not saying you should or shouldn't, I'm just presenting the information. Now let's take a look at the 3070 and run it against a bunch of different games and see how well it performs in 2023. No, not every game on the list was released in 2023, but a lot of them were released after the 3070 came out. And so therefore, I do think the majority of these games are more than relevant to basically test the card in 2023. Additionally, a few things you need to know. On the left side will be 1080p and on the right side will be 1440p and the graphical setting preset will be in the middle of the screen. Additionally, all of these tests were ran with a stock configuration of the card. That means I took the card out of the box, put it in my test bench, updated the drivers and I started benchmarking. There is no overclocking here. There is no undervolting here. These are stock settings. I don't know how much more clear I can make it, okay? So these are stock settings all the way through. Now, with all that being said, here's my test bench on the screen for anybody who wants to know the components that were being used in order to provide all of these test results. And without any further ado, here, we go. Starting things off with Assassin's Creed Valhalla, I ran the in-game benchmark on the Ultra preset. And at 1440p, we're averaging between 78 to 79 FPS with our 1% lows around the 50, 51, 52 marker. And at 1080p, we're averaging around 106 to 107 FPS with our 1% lows above 60 FPS. That is definitely a good sign there. 1080p is obviously not as demanding as 1440p. And so you see less VRAM utilization. You can also see that our temperatures are about four degrees cooler. And you can also see our overall power draw is about 15 to 20 watts less when compared to 1440p. But overall, Assassin's Creed Valhalla is more than playable on the Ultra preset with the 3070 at both 1080p and 1440p. Next up, we have Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. I ran the in-game benchmark on the Ultra preset. And at 1440p, we're averaging about 86 to 87 FPS and at 1080p we're at almost 120 FPS on average. The 3070's power draw is again lower at 1080p which is what we do expect and the overall temperature is more or less about the same with sometimes 1080p being a little bit colder than 1440p but you're literally talking one or two degrees Celsius and the VRAM utilization is once again a little bit higher with 1440p when compared to 1080p but still nowhere near the overall eight gigabyte limit of 
of the card itself. Next up, we have God of War 2018. And while the game itself did come out in 2018, it did not release on the PC until 2022. And they did make graphical improvements for the PC platform. At 1440p, we have an average frame rate of about 90 FPS, give or take, with our 1% lows right below 80 FPS. At 1080p, we have an average frame rate of 103 FPS, with our 1% lows right at 90 FPS. The overall VRAM utilization is very close to each other, but it is slightly higher at 1440p. The overall power draw is more or less identical, and because of that, the overall temperatures are also identical at both 1080p and 1440p. God of War is more than playable on the RTX 3070, both at 1080p and 1440p. Next up, we have Hogwarts Legacy on the high preset, no ray tracing, and no upscaling of any kind. And we're running around Hogsmeade, which is one of the more demanding areas in the game. And as you can see at 1440p, we have an average frame rate of about 78 FPS with our 1% lows around 30 FPS. And at 1080p, our average frame rate is about 99 to 100 FPS with our 1% lows around 47 to 50-ish FPS in that ballpark. It all rises and falls as I'm running around here and you will see that. The VRAM utilization is creeping on up there for both resolutions here. There's really not much of a difference between the two, but the longer my benchmark run goes on here, the more you're going to see that VRAM utilization start to creep up just a little bit more. The temperatures here are identical and the power draw is also identical. There's not really much of a difference there between the two. Basically, if you're running a 3070 and you want to play Hogwarts Legacy, I would recommend keeping it at 1080p. You can run it at 1440p, but I think your overall experience and, and gameplay experience is just going to be so much better at 1080p. Next up, we have Halo Infinite and I ran everything on the ultra preset. This does not include the ray tracing that Halo Infinite eventually added in there and also no dynamic resolution scaling or anything like that. This is all native rendering. I made sure to run the exact same map because I had a complaint about that in my 7800 XT video. So this is a custom game with bots. Everything is identical. The only difference here is the resolution. And as you can see at 1440p, our average frame rate is around 130 FPS, give or take. And at 1080p, our average frame rate is around 166 FPS. Both 1% lows are actually not all that bad, except for that one major dip that we just had at 1440p. I did end up resetting the frame rate counter just to see if that was a fluke. And it turned out for the rest of the benchmark that it was a fluke because it never happened again. The power draw is basically maxing out the GPU here. The overall temperature of the GPU is around 76 to 77C. And keep in mind the 3070 does have an eight gigabyte VRAM limitation. And as you can see here, we are over seven gigabytes of VRAM. I even received a VRAM warning as I was getting ready to perform this benchmark. So the game warned me about the VRAM limitation. This is a game that's definitely pushing it on the ultra settings for the 3070, but still more than playable. Next up, we have Spider-Man Remastered on the very high preset, native rendering, no upscaling, no ray tracing. And I made sure to pick two spots within the city to swing back and forth between so I can make it as identical as I possibly could. At 1440p, we have an average frame rate of about 106 to 108 FPS. And at 1080p, we have an average frame rate of about 150 FPS. Our 1% lows at 1440p are just below 70 FPS, whereas our 1% lows at 1080p are just below 80 FPS. Our temperatures are very close to each other, 74 and 75C respectively. And the overall power draw or power consumption here is also very close to each other, most of the time a little bit higher at 1440p, but not by much. Our VRAM utilization is over seven gigabytes here for both 1080p and 1440p. But as you can see at 1440p, we are very close to that eight gigabyte limit of the 3070. That is something to definitely keep in mind. Spider-Man Remastered is a phenomenal PC port. It is well optimized all the way around and you can definitely play it on the 3070, both at 1080p and 1440p. I have one final benchmark for you and I was not going to show this because I wanted to do the 1080p versus 1440p comparison, but my 1080p data was messed up. It actually ended up using FSR quality, even though I swore I told it not to do that. And then I noticed that the frame rate was a little bit too high for 1080p. So I went back, double checked it. Sure enough, found the issue and I took out the footage. But I know there are people who love to talk about cyberpunk. So here you go. At native 1440p with no ray tracing, no upscaling of any kind, the RTX 3070 with the in-game benchmark is averaging around 74 FPS with 1% lows right below that 60 FPS threshold. So a little less than ideal, but still manageable. The VRAM utilization is 
runs just below seven gigabytes. The temperature is 75 C and we are maxing out the power draw for the 3070. So overall, Cyberpunk is definitely playable on the 3070 at native 1440p, but I would probably recommend dialing it back to 1080p and or using an upscaling technology like DLSS or FSR. And that's it for this guy right here, the RTX 3070. Overall, not too shabby, even in 2023. Again, I know not every game I ran came out this year in 2023, but most of the games came out after this card came out. And so overall, I think the card has aged quite well, especially considering the fact that it has eight gigabytes of VRAM. Yes, there are cases where we were definitely approaching that eight gigabyte limit, but the reality is most gamers are not gonna try to play on ultra. Most gamers understand that we need to turn down settings. We need to customize settings. I Ideally, you don't want to just play games on the presets that they give you anyway. You want to go in there. You want to mix and match, but everybody's a different gamer, okay? What works for you may not work for me and vice versa and all of that, but I think the card did pretty well overall. Now, should you go buy it? Well, here's what I can tell you, okay? If you're going to buy it from geekbuying.com, I can definitely verify that this is a legitimate 3070 and it performs like a legitimate 3070, so nothing to worry about there. But the question I think you should ask is, should you buy a 3070? Like I mentioned at the top of the video, you can go and purchase a 6700 XT right now for around $300 and get similar, if not better performance and four more gigabytes of VRAM. Food for thought, something to consider. And so I would definitely look into that option if you're open to AMD, or you can check your local used market. Everyone's market is completely different. So my used market may be great. Your used market, maybe not so much. So it really just kind of depends. But overall, even after three years, the 3070 is still putting up some pretty good numbers, even at 1440p. And in cases where it might be a little bit too demanding, you can either dial it back to 1080p or use DLSS or FSR or anything like that. But I have a 3070 back there in my wife's custom Super Mario PC and it's still going strong. And so I'll use this one for my test bench and capturing footage of benchmarks whenever I'm benchmarking other cards out there. So it's definitely gonna come in handy. Thank you geekbuying.com for sending it out to me. That's all I got for this video. If you liked it, do me a favor, hit that like button because it goes a long way in helping me out. If you're new, get subscribed. And until next time, E-Rock out.